In this video, we are going to start a very important and interesting topic which you can implement in multiple programming languages that is object oriented programming. In short, we can call it OOPS. So, the question is why this object oriented programming structure is very popular in our daily programming life. So, the answer is when we start troubleshooting anything in our real life, if we plan anything in our real life, we don't just start implementing that. First of all, we put the cost, we put the outline, we put the everything which is associated with my plan. And then once we are done with this planning, we will start the implementation. The very same thing happens in this object oriented programming as well. This is nothing but the way of troubleshooting a problem as we do in our real life. In earlier programming such as in any structured programming, we just have some number of methods and we start calling them one after another. But throughout the process we don't know on which particular data we are working on. Here in object oriented programming, first of all we design a blueprint which helps us in creating a particular structure, an outline of any particular problem or any entity. And once we are creating that blueprint, we will put all the properties or behaviors and functionalities which I want in that particular concept. Let's take an example. Suppose I want to design a car, so how should I start? Should I take some uh, raw material and start designing the cars directly without knowing the dimension, height, width, number of seats and all? No, that may be not be a good idea and definitely it's not a good idea. So what will I do? I will first of all do some paperwork. I will do some planning whether I want a two seater, five seater, seven seater. What should be the size of my car? What should be the cost of engine? Which material should I use? Which type of wheels? I should work on and then after doing everything we will start implementing and exactly this is how we do the things in object oriented programming. In OOPS we firstly create an outline. In earlier programming we never had anything like that. So we started creating the classes in our object oriented programming because classes are nothing but a logical entity. Logical entity means they never allocate any memory in the RAM or anywhere by the time you are creating it. Alright, you put whatever functionality, whatever properties you want, you can put it inside and you can create an outline easily. And by the time you think like, okay, you are done, you can start the implementation. How? By allocating a memory to that conceptual, to that logical entity called class and how can you do that you can create the instance or object of that particular class object are nothing but a physical existence of the existing logic of classes all right that simply means once you instantiated the thing everything is now in the memory and you are good to start the implementations as here you can see based on the concept of objects because objects are the ultimate thing that's why we call it object oriented means after creating the outline we will have to make the object and on which we will start the implementation which will contain the data which will store the data and functionality which will do some tasks and here one of the very important feature of oops is like you can create the objects or instances at runtime. Like if you will compare the object oriented with object based, the difference is in object based you are not supposed to create the instances at runtime. For example, if I am creating a website for airlines booking and I have some number of passengers, on the basis of number of passengers I want to create the text boxes to take the input of their name. If I will make it in object based fashion, I will have to fix the number of text boxes from the very beginning and doesn't matter whether we have one passenger or 10 passengers, 
we will have a fixed number of text boxes, let's say five. But if I will implement it in object oriented way, we can have the exact number of text boxes at runtime by the time user is specifying the number of passengers. All right. Now let's see some more features or concept uh, principal concepts of object oriented programming. As here, we have already discussed about the class and objects. Class are the logical entities which will help us to create the blueprint and object are the real life entities of the same. Next is encapsulation. Encapsulation is basically wrapping up of similar data all together. For example, if I'm creating a class for accounting, that class should not take care of the any other entities such as employees or something that should only contain the data which is relevant to the particular entity called accounts. Abstraction. Abstraction in short is telling you what to do not how to do. For example, if our parents are giving some instructions, we will have to do that. But obviously every time they will not tell us like how we should implement that task. All right. So this is what we call the abstraction. Next is inheritance. Inheritance is again, which is something related to parents. Like we are the child of our parents and definitely we are inheriting some of the features from them. All right. So inheritance here will bring the concept of multiple classes where one class will give its feature to some another class and polymorphism where one thing or one object or one methods may be defined in multiple ways to do the similar task in different scenarios or and in different ways as well. All right. So these are some concept principal concepts of the object oriented programming here. We just saw the overview of all these. In our coming videos, we will take individual concepts and we will start implementing them.